How about a trip to India to get things going? It's a commitment that's for sure, so I've come up with my very own top 10 best places to see in India. I'm not sure if they will align with what you would want, but I hope it at least gives you an idea of what this beautiful country has to offer. But first, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can see more of my travel videos and top 10 lists. So now let's get into it. Starting us off at number one is the beaches of Goa. A hotspot for tourists and locals alike, Goa offers some of the best beaches in the entire world. There are plenty to choose from with massive brown sand stretches like Baga, where you can walk endlessly with the tropical palm trees flowing and the beautiful water lapping at your feet. Or you can check out some of the beaches located in the laid back fishing villages, which will definitely give you a more local atmosphere. Either way, resorts are close by offering unlimited access to this unreal vacation spot. Coming in at number two is Agra. I'm sure you've heard of this place even if you think you haven't. Set in the Yamuna River, roughly 230 kilometers southeast from Delhi, Agra is undoubtedly known for one thing to foreigners, and that's the Taj Mahal. Let's be honest, it's one of the most recognizable buildings in the entire world and can't be overlooked. The complex is massive and provides lots to see, so take your time and soak it all in before heading out to the city because it has plenty to offer. Agra is part of the Golden Triangle Tour along with a couple other spots on this list, so there's plenty of attractions and things to see. Number 3 is Varanasi. This city is regarded as the spiritual capital of India, and if you stick around long enough, you'll see exactly why. With over 2,000 temples dotting the city, there's lots to go around. And of course, Varanasi sits on the edge of the Ganges River, where Hindu pilgrims flock to bathe in the river's sacred water and perform funeral rites. It's here at the river banks is where you'll see the heart of the city with steps or ghats leading into the water being used ceremonially. Varanasi is also one of the world's oldest continually inhabited cities, so be prepared to slow down and do things at the locals' pace. Truly a place to see to appreciate history and Hinduism. Number four is Jodhpur, the second largest city in the state of Rajasthan. Jodhpur is located in the Thar Desert and is a popular tourist destination featuring amazing forts, palaces, and temples. One of these forts is Marangar Fort, an old palace converted to a museum which has the old city circling its walls. This fort, a huge staple of the city, and is one of the main draws of anyone visiting, overlooks many of the smaller buildings painted the iconic blue, which give the city the nickname the Blue City. A colored name much like several other entries on this list, so make sure to pay attention, there may be a test at the end. In at number 5 is Jaipur. Also located in the Rajasthan state and its capital, Jaipur also totes a colored nickname, the Pink City for its trademark colored buildings with none standing out more than the Hawa Mahal Palace, which displays the color perfectly. The city is home to over 3 million people and is also one of the three cities in the Golden Triangle Tour I mentioned earlier. The beauty of the city is on full display with the Royal Palace and massive walls sneaking through the hills, but none compared to the Amer Fort, nestled into the hillside just 11 kilometers outside the city in Amer. Easily the main attraction of Jaipur and offers a great alternative to your daily exercise by walking up the ramps to get inside. At least the reward is worth it at the end. Hyderabad falls into number six. With almost seven million people living here, the city is no joke. So don't let it fool you with having no massive skyscrapers. Located in the south, but still far away from the coast and capital of the Telangana state, Hyderabad is a major center for the technology industry within India and also has amazing upscale restaurants and shopping. Though the history is still deeply rooted here with places like Charminar, a 16th century mosque, or the Golconada Fort, a former diamond trading center, each offering you a pretty cool experience. Number seven is Mumbai. Formerly called Bombay, the city is located on India's west coast and is massively inhabited making it the most populated in the country with over 12.5 million people. Here you'll find a melting pot of all things India, and with such a massive place, it's hard to narrow down things to see. I suppose though, a good place to start is at the Gateway of India, down by the water. It's a busy spot with loads of tourists, 
but a good a spot as any, especially with the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel in the background if you're looking for that elaborate place to stay or just some Instagram pictures to show the family. I don't know, perhaps just getting lost in the hustle and bustle here would be enough of a sensory overload for some to leave it off their travel plans. But why not check it out? You may end up running into Indian celebrities, especially considering Mumbai is the heart of the Indian Bollywood industry. Number 8 is Delhi. The capital of India is the last entry from India's Golden Triangle Tour and is mostly considered the start and end point for it. With a new and old Delhi, you can easily have the choice each day as to what type of attractions you're going to visit. Some of the more notable attractions in Delhi are just huge, with the India Gate dedicated to soldiers who lost their lives in the Afghan War, the Red Fort, or Humayun's Tomb that's now listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. All in all, Delhi would be a great spot to start your adventures in India. Number 9 is Kolkata. The capital of the West Bengal state was actually the capital of India under the British Raj from 1773 to 1911. Kolkata is full of colonial architecture and art galleries and is home to the Mother House, which was founded by Mother Teresa, whose tomb is also located here. The Victoria Memorial is a good example of the colonial architecture with being built between 1906 and 1921 and dedicated to the late Queen Victoria, who reigned as the Empress of India from 1876 to 1901. Kolkata is also the financial, commercial and business hub of Eastern India and if you're looking for a stroll, the Harbour Bridge offers great views of the Hooghly River which cuts right through the city. And finally, coming in at number 10 is Jaisalmer. The last city in this list with a coloured nickname, Jaisalmer is also known as the Golden City, and you'll see as to why as everything is made from yellow sandstone. Also located in the heart of the Thar Desert, the city is far from dry, with the Gadsisar Lake. Constructed in 1400 AD, the lake is the number one tourist spot for the city. It offers amazing tranquil waters, temples and shrines, and is also a renowned bird watching location. Or check out the Badabag Garden with its awesome architecture and royal tombs. These are a couple of places to visit to really relax and recharge those batteries because you'll need them for the next main attraction, Jaislamur Fort. This massive fort is one of the largest in the world, sits atop a hill, and is far from the fort it used to be. Today, it's flooded with restaurants, hotels, the royal palace, and actually houses a quarter of the city's population, making it one of the few living forts in the world. I would say this would be my top pick in India, which is why I saved it for the end. Okay, and that does it for my first top 10 in India. I'm totally blown away by the complete diversity of cities that this country offers. Though when you think about it, it's a massive country to begin with, so I suppose it's to be expected. I hope you enjoyed this one and consider subscribing to my channel for more top 10s. I'll even throw a couple on screen here for you to check out as well. Thanks for watching.